Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and you're watching Dante's 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 Boxing Nation. Uh, if the Lufkin wasn't there, um, Canelo would really be a better way. Thanks for your time, man. In detail, but it's just it's just a bad look for them. You know, we're not gonna get in the pig pen and get dirty. Uh, I thank God for the grace to get in here tonight and and fight. Uh, you know, and take care of business. Um, I always want to do better. Felt like I could have did better, and I'm gonna be better. Uh, but as far as trying to explain myself and answer questions like. Of, you know some of the things that they're talking about. I just refuse to get into it. It's not about them anymore. They've done a lot of talking leading up to this fight, and I told you guys that they can dominate the headlines leading up to the fight. We stay quiet, right? I said, but Sunday morning we want to dominate the headlines, so they can go back up to the high altitude and keep breathing that good air and going to do what they're going to do. It's not about them anymore. It's about us. So, any questions? Hey Andre, congrats. Um, I thought you looked very sharp tonight, and I know you don't want to. I know you don't. You don't have to what they said, but <coughs> Abel said, "Quote that he doesn't give you even a slight chance right now, based on tonight." Who made Abel the voice of boxing? That's what I've been trying to figure out for the past couple years. Okay. I agree. I agree. I'm just, I mean, I'm just like, there's no no disrespect to the man. You know, I feel like he does a good job with his fighters, and I'll just leave it at that. But who? gave him like the absolute authority to like speak on people like and not just me i hear that guy talk about a lot of people in a disrespectful manner you know as if they just on some pedestal or something and they, they got to stay humble man well i know you don't want to get into a he said she said thing but how do you think you would fare against sergey he said what he thinks that's fine what do you think man god bless abel sanchez and his team i wish him nothing but the best um how do i feel like i'll fare against kovalev I feel like I'm gonna win. Um, and it's not gonna be an easy fight. He's a champion. And he deserves all the credit that he's gotten because he's not only fought everybody in the division, but he's gone to their hometown to do it. Um, but you guys gotta understand that I don't, as the fighter, the guy that's getting in the ring, I don't get caught up in who hits hard. And I was supposed to be the little guy tonight. And I didn't look like the little guy tonight. I don't get caught up in titles and he's from Cuba and he's from Russia. I don't get caught up in that. I've been doing this my whole life. I've been doing this 20 plus years, 20 plus years. So just like I've faced every other challenge, I will face the Kovalev challenge the same way. It's no fear on my end. I don't fear anybody. I respect fighters. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a great fighter. Um, and he's done some things that people haven't done. He's, he's won on the road. And you got to respect that, but I don't look at it like you guys may look at it in terms of, you know, oh my God, he's knocking God. I don't, I just don't look at it like that. Because if I looked at it like that, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Andre, you gave yourself a B minus out there at the ring. What did you like that you did in your first light heavyweight fight? And what do you need to do different or better? I like that we showed that, you know, um, that we're strong, play, plenty strong for this weight class. Um, we showed the pop in this weight class. Uh, we just want to keep sharpening things up offensively, defensively. And, you know, but I, I, I have to give myself maybe a B minus or so because with the stop and go, you know, layoffs and different things like that, you know, we, we had the same situation with Edwin Rodriguez in 2013. He was the number one contender. Uh, we fought Paul Smith, who, you know, had failed at two, two world titles uh, against Arthur Abraham. He's a solid guy. And, and now we're fighting another number one contender. So we, you know, we're, we're, we're showing that even though we haven't been consistent per se, we can still come get the job done. Hey, Ward. Are you hurt? In that tune-up fight, Andre? Excuse me? Who would you like to fight in the, the tune-up fight? Man, I'm just trying to go enjoy some time with my family right now. I don't, I don't even know. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, just reassess everything with my team, talk to them, and just see where they stand. Because all it's been about for me is, uh, you know, Sullivan Barrera. Hey, Ward. You represented your country in the Olympics, won the gold medal. You represented your country in the Super Six. You won that. And now they ask you to step up out of your comfort zone to 175. You win your first fight there against the number one contender. 
What does it take for an American fight to get the praise that he deserves? Because you were talking about the love that you get out in the UK and it's beyond the love out here in um, the States. You know what, it's, uh, I, I do have an opinion about that, but you know, one thing I'm learning as a, as a, as a young man is, is that I don't always have to share my opinion. Um, one thing that you know, I'm constantly reminded of is, 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 and I have to take myself back to it, and some may understand it and some may not, and that's okay, is that whether people give me credit or whether people don't give me credit, you know, God has blessed me with the talent and the gift. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm doing this for him. And then behind that comes my family. And in the midst of that, some people are going to love me and praise me and give me the respect I deserve. And then it's going to be that element where they don't. But I got I to gotta fight to stay in the middle. I can't get too caught up in the praises and I can't get too caught up in the criticism. You know, my team came back and was like, oh, they're not, you know, they're, they're tearing your performance down tonight. Man, it's okay. And at 32 years old, I'm maturing to that point where it's okay. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like my style. You don't have to like my personality. But I do know that I'm authentic and I'm real. I try to give the fans, I try to give the network that I fight for, I try to give everybody all I have. But some people are not always going to like what you represent. There's a lot of cameras in here. Some people like your website, some people don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some people like the way you write, some people don't. But you gotta keep writing, right? You gotta keep covering the sport, right? So that's, that's, that's what I try to, I don't always get it right. I'm not saying I've mastered it, but that's where I try to, I try to fight to stay in that place where it's looked like, man, I feel like I should get this, but you know what? It's not about that. A lot of people work. have you as the best pound for pound fighter in the world. <laughs> now you're up there, you're number one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think they've dropped me to number four or something like that, and and um, it's tough to say, man. I mean, of course, you always think maybe you're number one, but I'm just trying to get, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm trying to get to a position where I leave no doubt, because right now it's an argument. You know, they can throw the layoffs at me, and they may have an argument with that. They can throw the inconsistency, and it's hard to it's hard to argue with that uh, because guys have been more consistent, but. My motivation is to leave it to where there's no doubt where they can't take the number one spot. And if I can do that, man, that's, a, that's, that's, that's my goal. There's been some confusion on your HBO contract of whether or not the fight that you had to pull out of earlier in the year, of whether that actually counted as fight number one, and this would count as fight number two, or if um, you know your fight later in the year would be fight number three on your HBO contract. Has that been resolved, or is that still Yeah, personally, I try to just keep the business behind closed doors. I don't even know who put that out there. Um, and it's a great question, but I, I personally, I, I try to leave you know that kind of stuff just for you know, Peter Nelson, my team, Rock Nation, James Prince, and my lawyer, Josh Dubin. I let them work that stuff out. And if somebody talks about it publicly, so be it. But I, I try not to get into it publicly because personally, I think that's like, you know, just kind of behind closed doors. Ward, it's, Andre, it's your job to fight <clears throat> as a fighter, but what was going through your mind when the ref deducted a point? A lot of people press roll thought it was ridiculous. Oh, man, that was a tough one. And, the, the referee is a great ref, and um, I, but I was surprised. I mean, I think the shot was. Did you get a warning? No. I didn't think so. No. The 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 shot was borderline. I mean, I think I hit him on the belt, and he reacted. He was a it was a hard shot, and I guess on the cup line, I guess that's low, right? They showed a replay. It didn't look. It didn't look low at all. No. Or was it borderline? No, it, 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 it was low. It did not look low. Yeah, but I, I think. The, I got a picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Okay. So you guys say no, and some of y'all say yes, yeah, see? There, okay. there was a late hit after the bell. Can I, can I answer that real quick? I'm sorry. So I just think, I just, I was surprised that I didn't get a warning. Me too. I was shocked about that, but I, and I still don't know why I didn't get a warning. But That leads into my question. Did you get a warning <clears> when there was that uh, slightly light hit after the, or late hit after the bell? Yeah, and that was my fault. I just, I let that go, and it, you know, it wasn't intentional. It just, I was in the heat of the moment, and I apologized, and I was on me. So there's a possibility that that warning could have led into the, with the low blow, that that could have been why they Yeah, but it's two different infractions, mm -hmm. I, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. But I had to just, you know, I got upset, and I just had to just, who's I? Just bring it down. <laughs> Stay focused. Andre, everyone with that praise will come when the Kovalev fight comes, and you get through that. I think it could be. I think it could be the same scenario we're dealing with now, because I've had the Kovalev moment. I've had the boogeyman. I've had all of that. I've done that. And sometimes people have short memories, but like I'm over ten years doing this. 
So I've had the guys that were, ah, this is the guy, and then we beat him, and it was, you know, so I don't know. I don't know, but I'm not going to be doing this when I'm 40. Bernard can have that. <laughs> no parts of it. So I'm just trying to do it to where when it's time, I can look back and say, man, I didn't cheat the sport. I always came in in shape. I didn't embarrass the network I fought for. I didn't embarrass my team. I gave it all I had, and when you give it all you had, you can sleep good at night whether people love it or not. Or did HBO ask you to move up to 175? Did they give you an incentive to move up, or, or how did that go down? Uh, that's a collective decision between everybody. Um, but ultimately, you know, the buck stops with me because I'm getting in there. So, you know, regardless of, you know, what anybody may suggest, and HBO, I, you know, I know there's like this, I think this narrative out there where it's like I was forced to go up, and that's not it. You know, I mean, HBO would never try to force any fighter to do anything. Um, but I just think collectively it made sense. And that's a challenge that I wanted to take on. You know, I wanted to, uh, I could, it was hard to get guys in the ring at 68. And you guys kept saying I need to move up, so I listened to you. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, you still you still what did you think of Barrera's performance against you? The talk aside. Man, I think, uh, I, th I thought he put up a good fight. And um, I wish him nothing but the best, you know? Mike. Uh, Andre, Andre, two questions, quick. Uh, question one. You said that you might have been a little rusty and gave yourself a B minus, but Barrera only landed 15.4 percent of his shots, so that's pretty excellent defense. How many punches was that? 722 punches. He landed 700 punches. Whoa! Out of out of out of 722, he landed 111. Dang, 111 punches? So that's only 15 percent. That's really good. Still, he still landed. <laughs> Can you talk about your, what did you think about your defense tonight? That's obviously excellent numbers. I thought it was good. I thought it was good, but I'm telling you, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. And, and then on the knockdown. You know, oh, that was nice. <laughs> and you, you were on the inside, and you really didn't have a lot of chance to extend your arms, but you got him with a short shot on the yeah. temple. Yeah, I hit him right on the Yep, yeah. yep. It was, it, 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 I didn't try to do it, and that's what, you know, our coaches tell us in the in the gym every single day, stop loading up, just throw it and it'll come. And I didn't try to throw it hard. The ones that I tried to throw hard, I would I would land and, you know, he'd be able to take them. But that one, I just turned, boom, and it just was like a sweet spot on a baseball bat, and down he went. From that point, do you feel like you like the new Floyd, the fact that people don't give you your props, it's like they're not going to realize your greatness until you're actually gone? I don't know. I don't know. You feel like a, a no-win situation? I just, I mean, you know, when I went through the last year and a half, two years with this lawsuit, you know, I saw a lot. You know, I, I learned a lot. I saw a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, some good things. I saw some bad things. And, but I grew up, you know, and, and I realized that everybody doesn't have to like me, like I said. And it's just, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty awesome revelation to get, you know, as, as just an individual, not just an athlete. You know, as a man, everybody doesn't have to like me. Now, if I'm, you know, if I'm a jerk and I'm disrespecting people, and that's that's on me. But if I know that I'm trying my best to be an ambassador, a representative, and people are nitpicking, it's nothing I can really do about that. You know, and 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 that element, that element is always going to be there. Sometimes that element is not always a bad thing. It keeps you tight. It keeps you focused. And and it kind of is what it is. And and. I just don't, you know, when I was a little younger, I used to get more upset, you know, and I used to feel like, man, I, you know, I used to want to demand respect and demand this, but it's not about that anymore, man. And I hope that, you know, the young guys coming up behind me, that they don't waste the energy that I wasted early in my career trying to demand that kind of respect. Just focus, man. Stay focused on what you're doing. We got a short window to do it. I've been fortunate to be 10 years. Some guys get five, some get two, some get seven, but whatever your window is, man, don't focus on critics and naysayers. Let them be who they are. God bless them, man, but just stay focused on what you're doing, and the ride will be a lot funner. Yeah, wait, wait, guys, guys, I'm going to pick questions because we're on our last okay, few. Okay. One question each. Andre, do you feel you could have uh, finished him at any point in the fight? I wanted to. Um, what round? Probably the round that I knocked him down in, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky situation because, you know, She's gonna pick the next question. <laughs> you have to, you know, I was looking at his eyes, and it, you know, I, I think he was buzzed, and I saw him look at his corner, nod his head like I'm good, so I don't think he was out on his feet, and, uh, you know, he was still throwing hard, so, you know, I tried to test him a little bit, and he still had something left, so just, you know, the bell rang. I think it was like maybe 30 seconds left, so. In the back? Um, nope, nope, sorry. In the back? <laughs> hey, how you doing? How you doing, champ? 
How you doing? Hey, just wanted to let you know. Uh, is that the, the is that the boxing voice? Yes, that's the boxing voice. What's up, man? Boxing, uh, <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah, that's what's up. Let me let you know. When you moved up to 175, what I think you did tonight was send a message. Normally, people complain one way and say you fought too smart. You were boring. So tonight you opened up. You loaded up with a lot of shots. I didn't think you necessarily had to do, but it was effective. And when you fought inside the telephone booth, you won most of those matches. Exchanges. You didn't necessarily have to fight this way tonight, but you did. You showed your heart. 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 And I don't know if I just, I'm just seeing this, but was that the case? You fought hard, you laid it out there, you let him Do you agree with him? I agree with you 100%. Uh, congratulations on here on your win. How do you feel? Um, how do you feel about tonight's turnout and getting to fight in front of your hometown fans and your family? Oh man, I was blessed to see the people come out tonight. I came out for the weigh-in, and uh, it's interesting, man. They keep saying we ain't got a fan base, but uh, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're on the last few questions. Yeah, we started the left. We got to be up by a certain time. Yeah, we around the last few questions. Back to the knockdown more than saying. Back to the. I'm sorry, back to the back to the knockdown. The left, we started to throw, started to land the left hook over his right hand. Is that a, was that an adjustment that you made, or is that something you saw in training camp as far as you can land that left hook over his right? Yeah, that's something we saw in training camp. Something we saw on film. Where's my, you know, my coach Don and my other coach Jack? They called it. They they felt like the left hook was going to do it, and. we almost did it. Wasn't able to pull it off though. Completely. Andre, we noticed that um, you weren't using your right hand during the middle and late rounds. Was there a reason for that? Mm -hmm. I think that just goes back to just, you know, getting a good groove and, you know, just being consistent with my fights and, and stuff like that will flow. You know, sometimes I don't know. I don't have an answer for that right now. Um, I just got to watch the film and, and maybe try to figure something out. I'm good to hear. Like yeah, I'm fine. Woo. Hey, I gotta ask you this. Did Nate Diaz originally choked out McGregor? Mm, and I know you spent time with him in the ring. What was it like to spar Nate Diaz? He's, a, he's hard to fight. I mean, he's really hard to spar, really. And they call it the Stockton slap because <laughs> he'll slap you to death, man. I don't mean that in, in a bad way. Like, um, am I supposed to be drinking this because they sponsor this? <laughs> it's a good look, though, right? He, he's uh, he helped me get ready. I sparred with Nick and Nate. Uh, Nate helped me get ready for Chad, and um, he always comes in shape. And he throws a million punches from a million different angles. And I felt like he had a great shot against McGregor. I just was worried about the ten-day notice. Uh, when he started letting his punches go and he landed that short left, I, I knew he had he, I knew he had action because he uh, he's just a bad boy, man. He don't you know they don't care, man. They just come to fight. So I'm happy, man, because I know they don't always get the credit that they deserve. And uh, for him to come in and upset the apple car like that was it was I was so happy, man. I, it was two boxing matches on that night. And I didn't watch any of them. So my first UFC fight that I paid for. And uh, I'm screaming at the TV, man, let's go, baby. Like, I was pumped. My boy did it, man. So I'm happy. And it looks like he's probably going to get another shot, too, with the rematch. So I'm excited for him. Hey, Ward, Sergey Kovalev, he has the long arms. He has the long jab in the right hand. Do you plan on fighting him different than Barrera, like more on the inside? Or, or how do you fight someone like that? I don't know right now, man. I got I to gotta, We got to figure it out. Um, I feel like that's the mark of a champion. It's somebody who finds a way we got to find a way and I'm very competitive um, I'm up for the challenge and we're gonna find a way Andre I picked up a friend on Market Street when I got to town that was attended the fight there was a group of homeless people when I mentioned I was here for the Andre Ward fight they all collectively cheered what do you think you do for the uh, two of the spirit of the city um, I mean not just me but you know all the athletes that are that are from here, the ones that, that, that play here and represent the Bay Area, I mean, this is a special place, man. Um, it's not the biggest place in the world. I think Oakland has 
probably about a half a million people. Um, and just even, not just Oakland, but the, the surrounding areas. Um, Richmond. It's just all over. It's, it's just a special place. We support our people, you know, in a special way. And we don't always get the credit collectively, but that's just more reason to keep working and keep fighting. And, and I love it because I remember, you know, when I first wanted to fight here, people were like, Oakland? There's nothing in Oakland. Why do you want to fight in Oakland? And I just kept believing. I kept pushing for it. I kept asking for it. And now, you know, along with myself, guys like Marshawn Lynch, Damian Lillard, you know, the Warriors, uh, Draymond, Steph, Clay, all them guys, like, now on the national stage, Oakland, California, everybody knows about Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful thing. Hey, Andre, is 175 the end game, you think, for you, in terms of... I want to end it heavyweight. <laughs> I'm serious. Really? I really am. So what's the, the plan then to get there? I don't know. I I don't know. I think that uh, I would, I, you know, it would have to be at the end of my career. I'm not big enough to campaign in every way and, and try to, you know, it's, it's not a smart thing to do. But I think a, a situation like Roy's, where it's the right heavyweight, not a guy that's 6'4", four, 6'5", six, but the right guy where I put on, you know, just enough muscle and size where I can hold my own. And you go for it. And that, that's how I want to go out as a heavyweight champion. And I know it sounds crazy now, just moved up to 75, and it, does, it sounds crazy. But that's what I've always envisioned, and that's what I think can happen. Do you think that's like in five years, six years? Man, that's a long time. Man. I'll be 38, man. I said I didn't want to be in the ring. Nowhere near around 40. Man, I don't know. I just gotta, I just gotta take it a step at a time, you know. I think that. You'll just see a situation, situation like that, just start to evolve. Where you, you know, you see a guy say, "Man, he may be, he may be the guy." And man, I'm, you know, I beat whoever I need to beat it. Like heavyweight, defended the title several times, and we're gonna take a crack at him. And um, you know, I did some consulting with Mackie Shieldstone, uh, great, great guy, very knowledgeable. He helped me out a lot uh, for this fight. Um, I didn't go train with him in New Orleans for this fight, but a lot of consulting and just just a lot of great advice from Mackie. What does Virgil say about you wanting to go to Oh, he's with it. He's with it? Yeah. Yeah, he's with it. We talked about that since, since I've been a kid. Hey, Ward. You might have touched on this a little bit, but if you could just clear up the rumors that the Golovkin's people had said a while ago that you guys sat down with HBO and they said, yeah, we want the fight. Man, you no said no. bro, but it's not about Golovkin right now. It's not about him. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but they've done too much talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, they've done a lot of talking, and we haven't responded intentionally. And it's just not, it's not, you know, when he fights, it's about him, but it's not about him right now. He had his opportunity, he didn't take it, and, you know, we're moving on. I wish him nothing but the best. You haven't lost since you were 12. How do you keep that focus? Every day, every time you step into the ring, because one second I'm not paying attention and I just hate to lose, man. I yeah. hate it. I hate yeah. to lose like anything. And I'm a poor loser too. I just hate to lose. Like I don't want to lose in cards. I don't want to lose in board games. I just don't want to lose. So uh, no. I think that has, that's got a, it's got a lot to do with it. But you know, I just try to. Man, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I, I've really not even tried to like keep 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 my mind focused on the streak. I, I don't really don't think about it at all until it's brought up. I just try to, you know, God has blessed me with a a work ethic, man, and, and you know, it was cultivated as I was a young kid growing up. But it was just, this drive was in me to be the best and to try to, you know, just give it all I got. And, and I'm still like that, thankfully, at 32 years old. It's just I go in the gym and I try to try to max out, and I need my team to tell me, no, you're not going 12 rounds a day, you're only going six. Okay, no, just you're not running six miles, just run three. And as long as I got that mentality, I think good things will keep happening. You know, but when I feel like I can't put out like that anymore, then, you know, it's probably time to walk away. Andre, how do you plan on spending your Easter Sunday? Man, I'm going to probably be in the bed with my wife, chilling, <laughs> my kids, just running around. We're probably not going to do much. We're just going to just relax and just, I haven't been home, you know. I haven't been home. I've been in training camp, and that's part of my job, and that's the part that I hate the, the most is not the training, but just leaving my kids and my wife and not being a part of their life for six, eight weeks, you know. But uh, it pays off. Um, 
I was able to get mama that check tonight, you know, so she had me. And, uh, you know, it, 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 yeah. You think the Warriors going back to back? season stuff and the layoffs, like, we, we haven't made a, you know, a good deposit like that in a while, so I'm looking forward to it. Your defense looked real good and sharp. He tried to, Dorero tried to bully you on the ropes, and you were just slipping and moving. How did you feel physically? Did you feel loose? I felt pretty good with that. I felt pretty good with that, but the next step is, like, making them pay. You know, that's that's the part, like, even in my mind, I'm like, man, okay, man, he missed, he missed, he missed, now I got to make him pay. And that's what Virg is calling for. And it's just that those are the things I'm talking about when I say maybe a B or a B minus. You know, it was a good performance. But in my mind, it wasn't the kind of performance that, that I feel like I could be satisfied with. And then at the Kovalev roundtable earlier today, Kathy Duba said that this would be an HBO pay-per-view fight when you meet up with Kovalev if you, you guys stay winning. Do you think you're ready for HBO pay-per-view? Oh, yeah. It's been 10 years. Time. Hey, last question. How was the how was the crowd from inside the ring? It was a pretty live atmosphere. Uh, I'm kind of interested in your perspective of how the crowd is reacting. Man, it's great. It's it's I hear them. You know, I do. I hear them. I hear the chants. And it's tricky because fighting home, man, you gotta be. It's, people think it's a given. Like, oh, you're fighting home. It's easy. It's like, no, it's harder. I'm walking to the ring. I'm seeing cousins and uncles and friends, and I'm like, man, I got. But I gotta actually stay in the moment and I can't get caught up. I gotta go perform. Cause I'm trying to make all these people, I'm trying to send everybody home happy. So even when they're chanting your name, part of you wants to step on the gas, but it may not be time to step on the gas. So it's just, it's tricky. It's a, it's a fine line when you're fighting at home. But at the end of the day, you know, you wanna get that good performance and you wanna get that win. And like I said, send everybody home happy. Is uh, Kovalev then next or you want one more? Yeah. I I gotta let my team work that out, you know. It's just, it's just, as far as. I think another fight is in order. I would say so. You know, I don't want to say. Have you anything from the champions that you had in the ring with you, like Draymond and Steph? You know, like. Cut it out, You want me to answer that? No, that's terrible. That's ridiculous. I ain't gonna answer that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to make a big man. Can I ask you a, a nice, a good, heartfelt question? Yeah. How did it feel um, to have your opponent in the ring with you and then to have your opponent in the ring with you? Did that mean something special to you? Yeah, it's, uh, I, actually started my, I actually started at a small gym in Hayward. Um, that's where I first walked into a gym. That's where I first met Virgil. Um, first time I got punched in the face. Uh, all of those first times were in that gym. And then as I started to get better, we needed better competition. I went to Kings when I was probably maybe 11 or 12. And uh, I've been there ever since. And then, you know, a couple of years ago, we went and we got our own gym. But to be able to, like, bring this type of event back to to Kings and, and, and you know, something of that magnitude is always a blessing. I mean, they still got posters up from 2004. So that shows you the kind of respect and, and, and an appreciation they have for myself and my team. So it's, it's always special. It's always special. And the thing is this, like, you know, I can't apologize for fighting at home. You know, I've had 29 fights, and I fought at home maybe eight times. You know, and of course we want to venture out and fight other places, you know, Vegas, New York, but when I do get the opportunity to fight at home and, you know, network or whoever wants to bring it here, man, I, I got to enjoy it. You know, I got to enjoy it because, again, I'm not going to be able to do this. So when I can do it, man, I want to I wanna, I wanna definitely appreciate it.
way. Go get him, Mr.